You know, starting out as a new prepper and making the lifestyle change to one of self-reliance can be stressful and even overwhelming at times. Well, today I'm going to give you the first 12 things that you should get as a newbie prepper. Let's take a look at it. All right, folks, welcome back. So I understand that I've got a lot of new preppers and people watching to learn about preparedness and the lifestyle um, watching my channel as of late. And I've gotten a lot of questions from people about what do I need to start with? Where do I start? It can be really confusing. And us seasoned preppers can also easily forget that at one time we were newbies too. And there's a lot of info out on the internet and it takes a certain amount of experience to sift between the good and relevant stuff and the bad and the irrelevant stuff. So of course, to get the experience, you need to start somewhere. So what's a newbie to do? Well, it looks like a whole lot at first, right? So your best bet is fundamental preps, basic preps that are essential everywhere and useful in any likely disaster. Today, I'm gonna to give you some guidance on the first essential 12 preps that I think you should procure before anything else as a newbie prepper. By starting out with these 12 items, you're covering yourself against the most likely threats that could befall you and you gain momentum into your new personal culture of preparation. So let's talk about what you're preparing for. Now, it's always tempting, to, even exciting, to, as a beginning prepper, pick out the most exotic, crazy threat out there, like, say, a nuclear strike. Well, actually, that's kind of a, more of a reality these days. <laughs> or a zombie uprising or something crazy out there. And that's often counterproductive, as those scenarios are unlikely to happen. We all enjoy reading fiction, watching movies about these kind of subjects, but the things that most likely will hurt us and our families are far, far more mundane, if no less deadly. What we should be doing is focusing our efforts on prepping against the most common, most realistic threats to safety, life, and limb. So what are those? Everyday disasters, you know? We look at things like tornadoes, hurricanes, flooding, things like major blackouts, blizzards, even severe civil disturbance. Common viruses mutating into superbugs, earthquakes, mudslides, industrial accidents. Those are the disasters you should be worried about immediately because they're more common anywhere where you live. If you start to imagine what these disasters would entail for you and yours, you'll start to see some common trends on what you might be facing in the aftermath. The supplies and items you need to deal with these problems are the very same ones you'll find on this list. Now let's talk about common threats, okay? Now no matter where you live, or what climate you live in, people have the same fundamental requirements for life, okay? That's the same things we've read all along, okay? Uh, three minutes without air, three minutes without, three hours without shelter, three days without water, and three weeks without food. These fundamentals will allow you to prioritize what's best for your survival during a disaster, okay? So today I'm going to give you my opinion, in my opinion, okay? You can add stuff if you want below. Some essential preps you should procure as a newbie. These items are valuable in nearly every disaster situation that you can think of. So let's start off with a, the first thing I tell people to get when they start talking about preparedness, and that is water, okay? Now they say one gallon per person per day, a minimum three-day supply. One week is, of course, better. But next to air, water is the most consumable resource you'll miss the most, and the fastest thing to run out in an emergency. And remember, it's not just for drinking. It's vital for personal hygiene, cooking, sanitation tasks. That's why you're advised to stock so much of it. Now, they always say one gallon per person per day. Let's remember that that's very much dependent on your climate. Out here in the desert, I could probably drink that in one day, especially if I'm doing strenuous stuff outside, sweating. You want to replace all that moisture your body's losing, okay? So if you live in a very arid region or engaged in a lot of labor, and exertion after a disaster, you're going to be drinking far more water to replace the fluids in your body that you're just instead of just lounging around on your couch, okay? So there are tons of ways to store water, okay? To make your life a little easier, I'd say the best thing you can do is to run out and get either these two or five gallon jugs, depending on your storage, and store them. Water bottles are great, but they need to be rotated very often. They tend to suck in a lot of the garbage and stuff around. Um, I know at our altitude, they last about a year before they start getting all squeezed in and sucking in all the surrounding dust and dirt. So I would say go out, start stocking these things. Very, very simple to get. Uh, heck, Walmart has them, and you can fill them up there too, right there. So I would say start with that. So let's move on to the second item, okay? And eventually I'll move the camera in when we get closer to stuff, but I want to show you the second item first. The second item here is food. So when we're talking about food, we're talking about shelf-stable food, okay? 
about 2,000 calories per adult per day. It's vital maintain, for maintaining your energy levels and your mental sharpness during periods of exertion. It's also a very big morale booster. All right. Keep in mind that you can survive, you know, with survival levels of food intake and make it, your supply go a lot longer in a pinch. Every meal doesn't need to be a feast, but any way you want to do it is good for you. Um, you see I've got canned food here, just regular canned stuff. Now, I know some people are going to look at this and go, Ew, I'd never eat Chef Boy RD. Um, trust me, in an emergency, you would. We're not talking about health food here. We're talking about a way to survive. And that's a very easy, inexpensive way to get started today. I mean, you could go to the store today and buy this stuff. You also have freeze-dried stuff. I have some Thrive stuff back there. That's a little bit more long-term. That's good for 25 years out. Definitely a handy thing to have. But to start off with, and heck, I still stock the stuff, Canned food is awesome, and it'll have a good long shelf life. You want to make sure you keep an eye on the dates. Um, remember, I did years ago, I did a video on the actual expiration dates of food. A lot of it isn't as soon as they may say. I've eaten beans and weenies, this Van de Camp stuff. This is Best Buy 2024, so this is fairly new. But uh, still, I've eaten this stuff four or five years out, its expiration. You know, it's, it's Best Buy date, and it's been fine. So, survival food is definitely something you want to think about. There's lots of options, like we showed you here. There's canned meals, there's MREs, dehydrated camp foods, survival meals that require minimal no prep. So don't forget to keep an eye on your expiration dates. And another thing, also make sure you're stocking paper plates and utensils. Why? When we go back to water. We don't want to waste our water cleaning up our dishes. So, you go back to water <laughs> pretty much for everything. Uh, a way I store cleaning, you know, water for cleaning, maybe even cleaning myself, is when I finish with one of those big, huge containers of uh, laundry soap and laundry, um, I won't try to rinse it out because I know there's still some residual in there. I just fill it with water and store it in a separate area of my preps. And I know that's for hand washing, body washing, whatever. Yeah, it's laundry soap. Yeah, it's a little harsh, but you know what? It'll catch you clean and keep you clean no matter what. And you don't have to waste your drinking water. You've got that water stockpiled separately. So that's just some idea. Let's move on to the next item. Number three, headlamps. In most disasters, you can expect a loss of power. No power means no lights coming when the switch is flipped. Since humans are kind of reliant on, the, on our sight, darkness will hold even more dangers during a disaster. And a flashlight can banish the darkness and signal for help, but it also has to be used by your hands. Having the ability to be hands-free with a light aimed at whatever you're looking at is priceless. Plus, holding a flashlight with your teeth isn't fun. Um, these are just some basic flashlights I recently reviewed. I pulled it off the wall. This is actually headlamps, I'm sorry, that I uh, use. This is actually one that um, I use weekly to clean inside my car, vacuum out, you know, clean underneath the, the table here. And I just stick it on my head and clean with it. And it's held up great. You don't need anything super expensive. If you do get one with batteries, make sure you're stocking extra batteries for it. This one happens to be rechargeable. There again, make sure you have some way to recharge it. Um, a small power station, a little USB battery bank, whatever, make sure you have a way to recharge it. So headlamps, I think, are very important. Um, I wasn't a believer in them until I tried one one day during a power outage. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is amazing. My hands can do stuff while I'm out there looking around. So definitely want to get that. All right, number four, first aid kit. Okay, that one is from my medic, I believe. Yes, uh, I recently reviewed this one. Really nice first aid kit. That is probably the only first aid kit I tell you to buy and keep complete because it is a very complete kit. Along with your first aid kit, you should also have any kind of medications that you take on a regular basis in your first aid kit or in your prep somewhere. Um, if you're relying on, say, blood pressure medication, heart medication, whatever it is, make sure you put that in your stuff. If you rely, if you want to stock up on antibiotics, you'll notice I have a Jace case over here, and I've done a lot of stuff with them before. Um, this is a way that you go online, you'll do an online consultation with a doctor, fill out a form, do the paperwork, pay for it, and you will get antibiotics used in common emergencies prescribed to you personally, sent to your door, with a guide on how to use it and a year's phone call, you know, for a whole year, you can call a doctor and say, hey, you know what, my stomach's a little queasy, I've been throwing up, this is what's going on, what should I take? And they may ask you some more questions and say, you know what, take this or take the amoxicillin or take that. Um, and they can help you along with a guide in here that will tell you what to take for different kinds of things. I do have a link down below if you're interested in checking that out. Uh, I think it's an amazing deal and I think it's really awesome instead of 
buying antibiotics from foreign websites where you don't know the potency or the strength, and especially with the crises as we're seeing with all sorts of weird stuff being tainted in your, in your stuff. So let's move on to the next item. We'll move you in a little bit, and we'll talk about that. Now, number five is a nicety, but also very important, a hygiene kit. Okay, now I just have some hygiene items out here, but I actually have a Rubbermaid tub filled with soaps and detergents and shampoos and mouthwash and everything you could possibly think for hygiene, okay? I have a big blue Rubbermaid tub filled up with that stuff that I go through and rotate every few years. Hygiene stuff doesn't generally go too bad. I mean, I've had soap in there for 10 years and rotated it out and felt silly for doing it because it was just fine. But staying clean helps you maintain your mindset and good attitude. It also helps prevent the spread of diseases. Infections and other ailments can turn into real showstoppers, even life-threatening ailments. Now, besides bathing, you're going to need to go to the bathroom, okay? Knowing how to deal with that uncertainty is definitely something you should think about. Um, many years, about two years ago, I reviewed a uh, portable camp chemical toilet. Uh, it's a little bit bigger, holds about seven gallons of water uh, in the reservoir and about five gallons of clean water. And that way you can use that and remove your waste out somewhere else or bury it. So you definitely want to start thinking about that. You know, a five gallon bucket and some good decent contractor bags and a little rubber thing around the outside of the seat or one of those little pool noodles. That works as a toilet too, but you want to think about that before you start freaking out about other stuff and buying more expensive stuff. Definitely have a plan to deal with your waste. Next up is off camera, so we're going to move it over here. Uh, work clothes, work shoes. I have some 5'11 pants here. I have some good boots here. Um, definitely start thinking about uh, you're going to get wet, you're going to get dirty, bloody, whatever, in the course of dealing with the disaster. And definitely start thinking about needing rugged clothes and footwear that offer you some protection from the elements and from whatever else you might be dealing. One of the things I love about these 5'11 pants, and I actually bought these for a job that I worked in a, uh, in a gun shop, but uh, I have bunches of them and I use them regularly, is the fact that they um, dry very quickly. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I was stuck out in the rain out there um, at a training center pretty far away and I would get soaking wet and within an hour, especially in the desert, within an hour they'd be completely dry. They, they wick the moisture away from you too when you're sweating, but they're really, really good for that. Um, they're also pretty rugged and sturdy. Having a dedicated extra set of clothing will give you something to wear assuming all your others are lost and can allow you to get clean. And there we go back with the morale thing where you actually feel good. So, very important to make sure you got some extra clothing. Next up is an emergency radio, okay? A NOAA crank-powered radio will allow you to see updates on weather and emergency conditions when all other forms of communications are down. The more modern examples of this equipment include dynamo-powered things like this here, where you've got a dynamo in the front and you can crank it for power. Um, you can also recharge this. This can charge your phone. There's a bunch of different bands on this thing here. Uh, there's your cell phone charger. You have a light on this. This is from Eton. It happened to be a very nice little, uh, a nice little emergency radio, and I really like it. It actually came in a battle box, um, and I was really impressed that they'd send it because these are not cheap. <laughs> They're actually pretty expensive. And let me see if I haven't turned this on in a while. There we go. That's the weather band. And I'm, you're not going to receive on that. There we go. So there you go. Good example. Okay. Really nice radio, allows you to see, it even has a little solar panel on the top. Now granted, that's not gonna charge the whole thing, but it'll give you a some charge, which is kinda handy to have. And if you notice, it's sitting out here with the light over it, and the charging thing is moving, so it's getting a little bit of charge. Very, very handy to have, very important little piece of kit. So, let's move on to the next item. Large tarps and cordage. Now if you notice over here, I got a bunch of paracord wrapped around this tarp. This is actually in my e-bike, and this is a shelter. Um, that I use in conjunction with the bike itself to create a little shelter from the rain. I have cordage measured out for being able to pull this taut and tie it onto the bike. And I have some spikes in there. So having yourself a tarp is a really handy thing to have. A simple tarp with grommets is about as multi-purpose and a humble piece of gear as it gets, okay? A good tarp with strong cordage allows you to create a shelter from the sun, wind, water, whatever, and uses a ground cover so you stay drier and even a little bit warmer. Um, it can't really insulate you too much, but keeping you off some frozen ground might help a little bit. Okay, it'll also allow you to stay warm inside a cold house by making a little microclimate that's far easier to keep your body heat and warmth in, okay? Comes in handy for shoring up leaky, leaky homes, leaky roofs, camping out, okay? If you're camping and your tent springs a leak, that's a good way to cover it up and make sure. 
So you want to spend a little more. You want to get one that's made of synthetic material and really, really decent. Now, the next thing. It's going to be hard to show. Um, basically, all I could do is swing you over to my toolbox, but a good tool kit. Now, this is something that, you know, me coming from the city out to a rural area, I really had to learn about and also becoming a homeowner. Having a basic toolkit is a great idea for coping with the aftermath of a disaster and allowing you to fix, build, or improvise in order to maintain a good outcome. A basic toolkit should include a selection of usual, you know, muscle power tools like hammers, pry bars, saw, duct tape, drivers of all kinds, vice grips, wrenches, pliers, utility knives, screws, nails, glue, wire cutters, and more. Now, if you're a tool person like I've become, okay, you'll likely be set in this department. Same goes with firearms. If you're a firearm enthusiast, you're probably going to be set for, for preparedness type stuff. But it's all handy to fix what's leaky or broken and shut off utilities or nail up boards for your shelter or security. So definitely invest in some basic tools. I can do a video separately, probably would last about 30 minutes on tools just for survival. Um, we're not talking about water filters and stuff like that. We're talking about why I need a hammer, what kind of hammer I need, why I need a knife or a paring knife or a rug cutting knife or what kind of uh, pliers I need. You know, I could probably do a video on that for 30 minutes, so we won't get into that too far. Just make sure you have some tools and you know how to use them. And don't buy junk. Buy, buy some decent tools. All right, backup documents. Now, you'll notice I have one of these here. Okay. These are, this is one of my many disks or thumb drives, that I have my backup documents on. Things like mortgages, uh, licenses, uh, permits, uh, mortgage documents, bank statements, uh, cards, IDs, everything. Scan that stuff in and save it on here, okay? You can count on disasters with placing both you and all your important information in files and electronic database. So it's important to have vital IDs and titles and deeds and birth certificates and passports on a hard copy and digital format. Now, the hard copy, of course, is in my safe. Um, my safes are fireproof, but we all know how that works with paper inside. Probably not going to last too long. However, inside my bags with my emergency cash, I have these. And these have my, all of our personal documents. All your personal information should be on it. And it should be encrypted. I have this password protected. So that if somebody stumbles across it, you want to have that. So you want it for an electronic solution. You can save it in all common formats, but make sure you encrypt it. Like I said, so you don't give an identity, an identity thief a straight flush when ripping you off. So you definitely want to encrypt your information. However, it is important to have both the hard copies, don't throw them out after you scan them, and the documents. Okay, so that's very, very important. Number 11, okay, maps. A forced evacuation is no time for wrong terms and guessing games or I'll figure it out type stuff. You want to know, you want to know where you're going and how to get there. And don't think you can count on Google Maps either. So that'll probably be off uh, you won't be able to count on the internet for service being down or completely clogged up most of the time. Um, the internet, when there's a disaster, usually is extremely clogged. Phone service is usually down. Um, with power outages, now I know in recent years the FCC up mandated the amount of time that a cell tower has. Uh, I think it went from 6 hours to 8 hours or 12 hours. I'm not sure. But yeah, you're going to have a little bit of time with your cell phone, but you may not have much. And they may be clogged up. And in some areas, first responders get priority and your phone gets shut off. So good hard maps, hard paper copy maps. Um, I have this one of Nevada in my vehicle. I have a USA um, topographical map. Um, it's a booklet kind of thing where you fold open. So I have ways to learn how to get to where I'm going without worrying. A GPS is a good idea too. Again, GPS satellites could be down. I do have a very nice big tablet sized GPS in my Jeep. Um, and it's come in handy just locally around here when I'm selling stuff. You know, if I sell stuff on Marketplace and I have to drive around and find the homes out here, a bunch of little weird streets out here, so it does come in handy, all right? Now let's move to the last thing, and this is probably the most controversial, and that is a weapon. All right, we're just going to kind of point and say a weapon of some kind is very important. As sad as it is to say, um, without getting running afoul of other issues on this platform, uh, a weapon's going to be very important, okay? Disasters often bring out the worst elements of society, right along with the best, too. You know, don't get me wrong. There's good people and bad people that come out in disasters. Now, criminals will use the confusion and chaos to ply their trade with a less likely chance of being caught, and the unprepared will be scared and desperate and act erratically in an effort to save themselves and their family. So no matter what their motivation, you've got to accept the possibility and be prepared to fend off predators and stay safe. 
Depending on the scenario and where you live, there may be a greater or smaller likelihood of this happening. But wherever people are, you always have the potential for violence. Now, there's tons of different choices, all right? Less lethal options could be pepper spray, even a taser. They do actually sell the tasers that the police use now, the big ones with the, the wires that come out and the probes. Um, I forget who sells Taser International, I think it is. They do sell them now. So you can actually buy, it looks a little different than the one the cops use. It doesn't look like a gun. It looks more like a phaser. But they actually sell those. So if you're not into firearms, okay, that's a handy thing to have. Um, any kind of purpose-made weapon, if you live in a city where it's impossible to buy a firearm, you know, a baseball bat is better than nothing, okay? This is really second to only medical supplies in skill and training you need to use that weapon. So if you do decide on a firearm, please get training with it. Don't think that it's a magical talisman that you're going to be able to point at somebody and they're going to scare them away and don't believe the stories of, I just racked my shotgun and the criminal ran away. Not going to happen, especially in disasters where people might be coming down from drug addictions or missing psychotropic medications, whatever, you want to be prepared for that and you don't want to believe myths and you definitely want to get training, no matter what you're going to use. I mean, if you make an improvised weapon, practice with it. If you have uh, pepper spray, go out somewhere very far, remote away from everybody and spray it and see how it works. So basically, make sure you know how to do it and practice regularly with whatever you're going to use to defend yourself. And that's kind of why it's hidden back there because I know... YouTube has issues at, at times with, uh, with weapons, so we get the idea on that. So, there's a lot to learn about prepping, and it can be paralyzing for a beginner, okay? You're just going to freak when you start and go, oh my god, I need this, I need this, where am I going to get the money? You could start very small. I started small. I would spend 20 bucks a shopping trip, okay, on food. I wasn't even thinking about first aid or anything else. I started with food and water, all right? And that's all I did. I just started that way. Heck, I... I had a couple of old ones of these and I just filled them with tap water and saved it. Good old tap water saved the day on that case, you know. So everyone started somewhere. If you start with the most essential preps, you can be assured that you'll have a solid core of survival gears that will serve you well in any disaster, big or small. All right. From this basic beginning, then you can build out and grow as a prepper for a more comprehensive stash to handle any eventuality. You know, sure, we all want to get a Geiger counter the first time we think about nuclear stuff, but you got to eat, and you may be running away from that nuclear disaster, so you need a place to put this food where you're going to be safe and be able to take it with you and get away. So these are the things you got to think about. Anyway, that's my 12 things to get you started as a newbie prepper. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, if you're new and you have questions, feel free to leave them below. If you have suggestions, because this is by no means comprehensive, I'm sure there's things I could have added. Feel free to add them below, too. Um, don't forget to check out our links down below. We have our Amazon affiliate store. We have our Jace Medical link as well, if you're interested in getting antibiotics. Legit, from a doctor, prescribed to you. Uh, we have our Freeze-Dry Wholesalers link. You guys have seen me do countless reviews of that, and i got more reviews coming up. We also have a contest going on where we're giving away desserts, so don't forget to check that out a few videos back. My link for Freeze-Dry Wholesalers will save you 15%. Nobody else has that, so click that link and save 15% just by using it. You'll see your discount when you check out. You don't need a code to enter. You just click the link, go there, shop, and check out, and you'll see your discount. Don't forget our My Patriot Supply Link. $250 off a three-month supply of food there. Again, if you're a newbie prepper and you have no food, that's a heck of a way to get started. And for $250 off, now previously it was always $150 off on this. $250 off is a good deal. And it's affordable to begin with, so that's going to really help you out. And it's three months' worth of food, boom, right at your door. Then all you got to do is stock water to prep it with. Don't forget our Thrive Life freeze-dried food store. I have my Thrive Life stuff down here as well. Um, if you're interested in trying out Thrive Life, feel free to try them out. You don't have to join anything. You can order. You can save money by becoming a delivery customer where you get a delivery every month or a consultant and resell the food as well as make yourself some money back on the sales you do. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.